Boeing 737 cockpit is alive with quiet clicks and whirs. Pilot moves a small lever, flaps five selected. Now here's the question, why flaps five? Why not one or 15? Every pilot involved in Boeing 737 operations does this before takeoff, and it's not just a habit, it's science, and years of testing have proven it's the sweet spot between safety, power, and efficiency for the Boeing 737 family. Think of like choosing the perfect gear in a car before a steep hill. Too low and you waste power, too high and you stall. Flaps 5 is that just right middle ground. Enough lift to get Boeing 737 off the ground fast, but not so much that it slows you down. If you love learning what really goes on inside the Boeing 737 cockpit, hit that subscribe button now because what's coming next really gets interesting. Think of the wings of an airplane like big curved sails. When an aircraft is getting ready to take off, it needs extra lift so it can leave the runway and climb into the sky. That's where the flaps come in. Flaps are movable parts at the back of the wing. When flaps combined with slats drop down, they increase the wing's curvature and sometimes its surface area. By doing that, the wing can create more lift at a lower speed. But here's the catch. Increasing lift doesn't come without cost. Dropping flaps also increases drag, essentially the force slowing the aircraft down. So you get a trade-off. More lift, good for takeoff, but also more drag, which slows things. Here's a simple analogy. Imagine you're trying to sprint up a hill carrying a backpack. Adding flaps is like putting in a helpful booster pack so you can climb faster at the start. Good, that booster pack makes you heavier and harder to push forward once you're up the hill. So you don't keep the booster on forever. In aircraft terms, the flaps help the airplane get airborne sooner, shorter runway needed, and at a safer, lower speed. But if you leave the flaps too far down once you're climbing, the drag eats into speed and fuel efficiency, and the climb rate suffers. So what flaps do is simple but crucial. They boost lift when you need it, take off and landing, then retract so you don't suffer unnecessary drag during climb or cruise. It's all about balancing lift versus drag, and that sets us up for the next part. If flaps are useful, why does Boeing 737 almost always pick exactly flaps 5 for takeoff? What makes that setting the sweet spot between too little and too much? Let's dive into the why. In commercial jet operations, particularly with narrowbody aircrafts like the Boeing 737, you'll often see takeoffs done with a flap setting of 5 degrees, or the equivalent small notch, rather than 1 or 15. Why? Because it hits a strong sweet spot between performance, safety, and economy. First, what happens if you pick a very low flap setting like Flaps 1 with Boeing 737? The drag is minimal, which sounds great for climbing fuel, but with so little flap, the wing has less extra lift, so the airplane needs a longer runway to reach the required speed and rotation angle. Also, the margins for safety, especially in heavy aircraft, high altitude or hot conditions shrink. On the other extreme, what about flaps 15 or a significantly higher setting? That gives tons of lift early so the ground roll is shorter, good, and you lift off sooner. But the flip side, lots of drag, slower climb, more fuel burn, reduced overall efficiency. One performance manual notes that higher flap settings increase fuel burn because of the drag penalty. However, generalizing that flap settings can increase fuel burn is an overstatement. In fact, it's more dependent upon the specific aircraft and its design. So, Flaps 5 is a kind of Goldilocks setting. Low enough flap to keep drag modest, high enough to give extra lift for safe rotation and reasonable ground roll. In plain terms, enough boost to get off the ground safely, but not so much that you're paying a heavy drag toll. Performance charts show that the optimal flap and slat setting will minimize the takeoff distance and maximize the initial rate of climb. Put another way, by selecting Flaps 5, airlines flying a Boeing 737 can optimize the climb out, good rotation margin, which matters for safety, plus efficient climb, which matters for cost, plus runway length acceptable, which matters for schedule and airport operations. Airline operations also benefit from consistency. If your standard flap setting is Flaps 5 for most regular departures, it simplifies pilot procedures, performance planning, and scheduling. You don't need a unique flap setting for every minor variation unless the runway or load demands it. In short, flap 5 isn't chosen by accident. 
It's chosen because it balances all the key variables. Lift, drag, runway length, climb, fuel in the sweet middle ground. But there's more to the story. It's not just physics. There's one major factor that comes into play. Before we find out what's on the other side, how about you take a moment to subscribe to JetLogic as we frequently post thought-provoking stories from the world of aviation, so don't miss out. It's not just about physics, it's also about money. Airlines care about every drop of fuel burned. According to the International Air Transport Association, IATA, fuel makes up nearly 30% of an airline's total operating cost. That means even the tiniest change in how a plane takes off can translate into massive savings. And this is where Flaps 5 quietly becomes a money saver, particularly in the case of Boeing 737. By using a lower flap setting, pilots reduce drag during climb. That's the part of the flight when engines are working the hardest. Less drag means less thrust needed, and less thrust means less fuel burned. For instance, Boeing's own 737 NG flight crew training manual notes that reduced flap takeoffs can save hundreds of pounds of fuel per flight. Multiply that across a global feat and the numbers become staggering. Over a year, a single airline could save millions of dollars just from optimizing flap settings. It's important to clarify here that this primarily depends upon weight, runway, and temperature. Hence, for Boeing 737 series, Flaps 5 can save significant fuel depending upon conditions. There's also the matter of time. Climbing faster to cruising altitude means getting into thinner air sooner, where fuel efficiency improves dramatically. Every minute spent at low altitude burns more fuel, so the quicker climb enabled by Flaps 5 becomes a built-in economy. Operationally, using Flaps 5 as the default simplifies life for pilots flying an aircraft from the Boeing 737 series. Airlines like consistency. It standardizes takeoff performance, reduces the margin for human error, and keeps training costs lower. Pilots don't have to run new calculations for every flight unless the conditions demand it. Safety still leads, of course. Airlines won't trade risk for savings. Flap 5 strikes that ideal middle ground. Enough lift to guarantee safe rotation and obstacle clearance, but with less drag than higher settings. It's predictable, reliable, and efficient. Everything an airline wants from both a safety and financial standpoint. But of course, Flaps 5 isn't always the answer. There are times when pilots go higher. Flaps 10, 15, or even 20, and for good reason. Let's start with heavily loaded aircraft. When a plane is near its maximum takeoff weight, it needs extra lift just to get off the ground safely. More flap gives that extra lift, even though it also brings more drag. You'll often see wide bodies like the Boeing 777 or Airbus A330 use flaps 15 on long haul flights packed with passengers, fuel, and cargo. Next, short runways, common at regional or island airports like London City or St. Martin. With limited space to accelerate, more flap helps the plane lift off sooner, trading climb efficiency for safety on the ground. Then there are the high altitude airports, such as Denver, 5,430 feet, or Kathmandu, 4,400 feet. The higher you go, the thinner the air and the less lift the wings can generate. Pilots compensate by using a higher flap setting, say flaps 15 to restore that lost lift. And don't forget the hot weather. Warm air is less dense, so engines produce less thrust and wings produce less lift. This is why airlines operating from places like Dubai or Doha in summer often need higher flap settings during daytime departures. Pilots don't guess these numbers. They use detailed performance charts built from manufacturer test data, factor in runway length, altitude, temperature, wind, and weight to find the safest takeoff configuration. The FMS and EFB systems often recommend the best setting to the pilot. Another important point to note here is the Boeing 737's FMS does not auto-recommend flap settings where the Airbus does. One example, when a Boeing 777 departs Quito, Ecuador, over 9,000 feet elevation, pilots typically select flaps 15 to achieve safe lift at reduced takeoff speeds. At sea level, that same plane would almost certainly use flaps 5 instead. So while flaps 5 dominates the skies for most takeoffs, it's not universal. It's just the setting that balances all forces best in most normal conditions, that practical sweet spot between lift, drag, and fuel.
At the heart of every takeoff lies one simple formula. Lift equals coefficient times air density times wing area times velocity squared. That's a lot of words, but it really means this. Lift depends on how much air the wings can grab and how fast that air moves over them. Flaps change one part of that equation, the lift coefficient. When pilots lower the flaps, the wings grab more air, increasing lift. But there's a catch. The same change also raises drag, slowing the aircraft down. The secret of Flaps 5 is that it lands right where the two forces, lift and drag, meet in perfect balance. It gives enough extra lift to get airborne quickly, but not so much that the climb suffers. Data from Boeing 737NG performance charts show that climb gradients at Flaps 5 are almost identical to higher flap takeoffs, but with significantly less fuel burn. Engineers have tested these settings through thousands of simulations, and real-world flight data confirms it. The sweet spot is small but consistent. Every degree of flap costs you drag. Too little and you need a longer runway. Too much and you waste fuel and time. Flaps 5 hits that middle zone where the aircraft rotates smoothly, clears obstacles safely, and transitions into climb without losing speed. This is why test pilots recognize it as a sweet spot for optimal performance. Boeing's flight manuals describe Flaps 5 as the optimum configuration for standard operations. Flaps 5 isn't luck. It's the result of years of engineering math, wind tunnel testing, and airline feedback, all leading to one conclusion. It's the setting where physics, performance, and fuel efficiency finally agree. And that's the beauty of Flaps 5. It's where safety, speed, and savings come together. Enough lift for a smooth, confident takeoff, enough efficiency to climb fast without guzzling extra fuel. It's not just a pilot habit. It's a piece of engineering perfection refined over decades. In that moment after liftoff, when the aircraft climbs cleanly through the clouds, the pilot slowly retracts the flaps. The engines ease, the drag falls, and the jet settles into its most efficient rhythm, all because of that perfect takeoff balance. Flaps 5 is more than a number on a dial. It's a symbol of how precision and science quietly shape every flight you would take on a Boeing 737 aircraft. If you enjoyed this deep dive into cockpit science, Subscribe for more videos that take you inside aviation's smartest decisions, because every switch, every setting, even one as small as Flaps 5, has a story worth telling.